Um, well, should we get started? Um, Helen, I believe, I think you're, let us know if you can't, if you're not connecting or anything. Um, but yeah, so tonight is our meeting with Creative Discourse in the City Council. And so um, thank you so much, Mary, for joining and for supporting us during during today's, you know, big, exciting day, you know, about a year and a half in the making. Um, and um, and so on our agenda today, we are going to do kind of all the usual stuff. So the welcome intros, agenda review, minutes review, public comments, um, self-education, learning roundtable. Then we've got, you know, just checking in on report backs from other city committees, um, including the police review committee. There's been a lot that's happened in the past month. And then the Montpelier live request I just wanted to circle back on. Um, and then we're looking over the recommendations from Creative Discourse and from the Police Review Committee um, and to prepare for the presentation before you know, going over other business, setting next meeting agenda and adjourn. And so I, I think you know, we um, had planned to do some of this preparation like asynchronously and having just got the slides and the, you know, the report back from Creative Discourses yesterday, I didn't like, I felt like I needed to do to see that to prepare for the presentation. And then since I got them, I was like, oh, maybe we could have been preparing ahead of time, but just wanting to recognize that I thought we would, I would be more um, prepared kind of coming into this meeting than I, I am. Um, but how does that agenda look for folks? Any Anything to add or anything else we wanna make sure we discuss? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, even though I think we know everyone on the call, should we just do a quick round of, you know, intros? How's your month been? Um, any any comment to share? And then, um, yeah, any self-education? And so anything that you have participated in or been reading or any any anything to note kind of of what's been happening around social, racial, economic justice uh, in your life? I can start, Shana, because I'm not sure if I will be connecting. Um, well, um, this month was for me mostly preparing for my uh, teaching. So I couldn't do really that much for myself. Uh, but I have been reading Phone Porch uh, Forum and I was really upset seeing all this racist events. So it's remind me how our work is uh, really important for our community. And yeah, that's all from me for today. I'll go, I'll go. So Carol, Montpelier Community Justice Center. Um, we're working on, we're working on like looking at you know, how we go forward in terms of like offering training, especially to volunteers as we um, go into our new, we're in our new fiscal year. Um, so that's one of the things that we're continuing to think about is how we keep talking about these issues around, um, around equity. And um, I'm also looking forward to working, you know, as part of the leadership team of the city, working on that, like what are the things that are going to be implemented and how are we going to do that, especially with regard to policy. Um, so for me, wrapping my head around, um, you know, how, what, what, what potential changes we make to policy and, and uh, how we implement our process is, it just takes a while for me to really get there and to, to think about it. So to make it really concrete, um, three of our four staff members were able to attend a, uh, a day long workshop with Tabitha Moore, who was presenting at the Summer Institute for Restorative Justice in Schools um, at, in Lake Maury. And so that was a really great reminder and new information about like the, you know, everything historical that set up our, the, the systemic racism that we, that we have uh, now. So that was helpful. And again, we talk about it all the time as a staff. So we keep doing that work and reading, um, re you know, reading books and having the conversations. And so it's a, just a personally a big part of my life ongoing. Um, so that's where we're at.
I'll go next. I am a member of the public. <laughs> I just sort of drifted over from the homelessness task force and then I show up at the housing committee and you know, I just sort of haunt city committees uh, that seem to impact. Uh, I am on the uh, Hunger Mountain Co-op Diversity Committee. And so I kind of like to watch and see what's happening here so that I can um, see if there are any linkages. So at any rate, my name is Carolyn Ridpath and I'm a citizen of Montpelier. Well, I'll, I'll report. Um, I've been mostly, much of my time was spent working on the, uh, with the police review committee, getting our report together and sort of going through revisions and discuss, discussing our recommendations. Um, otherwise, I've been reading articles. I mean, this has focused a lot of my attention on policing. So I've been reading articles from, about policing around the country and um, and following, there, there was an interesting article in the New Yorker about the Supreme Court probably um, taking up and maybe overturning uh, affirmative action uh, or uh, in, in education, which was very alarming. Um, and it, it, at this point, it affects mostly higher education, but of course, it can affect um, all sorts of things in education. So, um, you know, I, just do a lot of reading and that's very depressing. So, but, but it is what it is. So that's why we have this committee, I guess. Yeah, and I just, I haven't read that article but I just found it when you were talking and put it in the chat and I'm excited to read it. Um, yeah, and I'm Shana Casper um, on Kent Street and I, um, yeah, I just, I really have just been, I went to the meeting where they're reviewing all of the recommendations from the police review committee. And I think I just want to express my like really deep like gratitude for the really thorough and like, um, and uh, uh, just, you know, seeking out a lot of different um, perspectives and being able to kind of incorporate so much of that into a series of recommendations and to have like a really robust conversation for many, many, many hours that I was, you know, doing other things during and to be like really engaged during that, during that whole time to really make sure that, you know, coming up with good recommendations to bring forward to city council tonight. So yeah, just really, um, really grateful and, and, and excited about that work and how it overlaps with our work. Um, and I, I think that is, is, um, yeah, really, really the, the biggest thing for, um, for, for me right now. Oh, Lauren, I think, are you last? Uh, yeah, I think so. So good morning, everyone. Lauren Hurl, the, um, city council liaison with the, with the committee and, um, Yes, I'm feeling similar to Carol of school starting next week and <laughs> the, the quick slip into fall. But um, but anyway, yeah, it's been definitely the summer I've been serving with Michael on the police review committee, which has been a big a big part of the summer work. Um, and excited to see the progress and having a report and a whole suite of recommendations there, and then how. Um, the work that will be presented tonight from creative discourse i'm excited and like as we get into um strategic planning for the council and budget season like i feel like we're we're ready in a way that um it, you know it's like the right timing to have all this ready so i'm excited about that it's great to be with you all thanks all and thank you michael for circulating the minutes i'm sorry i did not see those at all um I am wondering if folks have gotten that email and want to pull it up um, so we can review and approve the meeting minutes. And one thing I'm noticing is just um, Pellin's name is P-E-L-I-N. Oh, I get it wrong every other time. Every other time, right. It's 50-50 and <laughs> as an S-H-A-I-N-A, I understand. And my apologies, Colin. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, no problem. <laughs> um, 
I think I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Hold on a second here, sorry. I see people still reading, reading faces. Uh, and I think Lauren wasn't there and Michael wrote them. So Pellen, I think you need to second them. Sorry, there we go. If you're ready to do that. Yeah. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Awesome. Thanks for approving the minutes. Um, and thanks for taking them, Michael. Yeah, and you're good for taking them today as well. I yep. should have started the meeting off with that. that Cameron checked in with me and wanted to so was like, want to make sure we're doing this right by city rules. So apologies, Cameron, if you're watching. Okay. Um, so moving to kind of report back some other related city committees, I just really quickly, you know, got the request from Montpelier Alive to, to to kind of work with them in a um in in like with their DEI committee to figure out what's needed for Montpelier Alive and their process. Um, as you know, they got a um a they hired a consultant to like basically like start working on writing a report, but there there was kind of no real follow through or like next steps coming out of that. And so they're really excited about wanting to dive in a lot deeper and looking for support from CJAC. Um, and so I can do it, but I would rather not do it alone if anyone else is interested in, um, you know, supporting Montpelier Alive through this process. Is anyone, would anyone be interested in scheduling a time with their, that DEI committee of Montpelier Alive with me? I can do it, Shayna. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, sure. Um, any other committees before kind of diving into the police review committee? I'll also just say the um, public restroom committee has not yet met. Which, Mary, I think you're going to be the point staff person on. Is that right? No, never mind. Never mind. Not, not throwing you under the bus. Okay. All right, Michael, Lauren, um, police review committee kind of report back. Um, and I can also put the link in for all of the recommendations um, in the chat here as well. Do you wanna start, Michael? Um, well, um, I don't have it in front of me here. So let me see if I can pull it up too. Um, we, we ended up, that's not right. We ended up making, um, what, about a dozen, is it, recommendations? Is it that many? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna go get at it another way. Um, um, so why don't, why don't you start and Lauren and I'll, and I'll try to pull up the document. Sure. So I guess just like um, process wise where we are just to get everyone um, up to speed. So the committee, um, so I guess since CJAC last met, uh, we've, you know, had a few more meetings and we, you know, did our final set of recommendations and, you know, essentially like people who are on the committee were putting forward recommendations they were interested in making. So, you know, we heard a series of ideas from the community input processes. People had, you know, just ideas that they were bringing based on their research and all that. Um, there certainly was a set of ideas that came up that we didn't have capacity or time to get to, um, but we did um, make a number of recommendations, which is what Michael's pulling up and maybe, I don't know how much detail you wanna get into Shana, um, but we could quickly run through them or at least um, but like the, I don't know if the version of the draft report might be a um, easier way to see them all in one place than the um, link you, that you sent around, but. That's what um, I couldn't find on the online. So I don't, there, yeah, I don't think it's been like link, circulated be to the public yet, um, but. We're, we're going to be re reviewing the, the final draft 
um, and then sending it out to the public. And I think that's the, isn't that the process plan that we agreed? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're meeting next week um, with a, so we, we, we had a full compilation of the report. We were providing input and we've got like one more meeting to, to do any last feedback on that before we send it out to the public and trying to get it back out to the um, a, a host of stakeholders and people who had provided input on it um, and then giving that a couple of weeks. So we, we've actually gotten um, pushed back a little more um, wanting to make sure that we didn't short shrift the opportunity for public input before we finalize. So it's gonna be more like, I think early October that we're gonna be presenting that to council. Um, but so there is time if um, anyone has capacity and interest to provide feedback still on the report. Um, and just, just so people know, so we had essentially decided that we were gonna recommend to council to continue the, the committee you know, whether or not every single individual wants to continue, but to continue it at least for um, a next phase um, in particular to help with implementation, you know, as council works through the recommendations and tries to put them into practice so that there's the people who have done the research are available and could help with um, follow up. And then there again was a set of ideas that we, you know, didn't have a chance to work through. So, you know, Obviously, there's a ton of issues that could have could be uh, looked into. So, having an ongoing forum for um, for those conversations was something we were going to recommend as part of that. Okay, um, I, I finally got to this recommendation section. So, I'll just go through them very quickly and uh, let. And if you want to know the rationale behind any of them, um, that the report re includes a rationale for each of the recommendations that we make. So the first one is uh, an, for an additional social worker, res uh, for additional social worker resources, uh, recommendations that the city council should add 1.5 full-time equivalent social workers to the MPD contracted through Washington County Mental Health Services in order to fortify its current co-respondent uh, co model. One full-time equivalent social worker would be dedicated exclusively to case management and follow-up the additional halftime position would be dedicated to crisis response, bringing MPD to one full-time equivalent crisis response social worker. That's that one. The next one was body-worn cameras. Recommendation is Montpelier City Council should budget and plan for the purchase, deployment, archiving use, and all requirements and policies associated with the use of body cameras, worn, body-worn cameras, for all officers while on field duty. Body-worn cameras will not be used by the MPD until the Montpelier City Council finalizes a policy for the training of officers and the use of body-worn cameras that one, protects privacy and rights, two, ensures officer accountability, three, ensures transparency, four, incorporates best practices in records management, and five, tracks and analyzes their impact. As part of the development of this policy, the Montpelier City Council should review the ACLU Vermont's criteria for body-worn cameras policies and the Vermont Law Enforcement Advisory Board body-worn cameras policy draft, July 20th, 2021. So that was that. Um, community engagement protocol after use of force incidents. Recommendation is that the, the Montpelier City Council should require MPD to establish a community engagement protocol for officer involved shooting incidents. That policy should follow best practices, including early, full and proactive information sharing with community members and the media. Facilitated and trauma area community meetings and educating and engaging community leaders and stakeholders. This approach could also be used for other major use of force incidents as city council and MPD see fit. Um, next one is data transparency recommendation. This is a bunch of recommendations. Um, number one, the city council should direct the MPD to develop a comprehensive data and transparency plan that identifies one, policing data to be collected and posted on the city of Montpelier's website 
and two, specific data management practices for each category of policing data. As part of this process, the city council should consult the policing, policing projects data and transparency framework for policing agencies for guidance on what data to collect and make available to the public and the best practices for regarding format and, and data. Um, recommendation two, the city council should direct the city to develop an accessible web page and easy to use dashboard for public access to policing data in raw format, summaries and trends. In addition, summaries avail of available policing data with a link to the web page should be included in the MPD section of the annual report. And I think that's, that's all for that. And then, uh, the fair and impartial policing. The recommendation is Montpelier Police Council, Montpelier City Council should direct MPD to assess and strengthen the city's fair and impartial improve policy, policing policy to better protect immigrant rights, clarify the circumstances when officers may consider personal characteristics or immigration status when making law enforcement decisions and ensure processes and procedures are provided in an equitable and impartial way. Um, officer misconduct internal affairs. The city council should create a civilian Montpelier police advisory committee to review annually all allegations of misconduct by the MPD and advise the city council with respect to all rules and policies relating to internal affairs. The committee should consist of three to five members, at least one of whom should be an attorney and one of whom should be a, a retired police officer to be appointed by the city council. In addition, at least one of the members should re represent historically marginalized stakeholders, e.g. housing, unstable, BIPOC, LGBTQIA+. Committee members must complete internal affairs training. M M MPAC shall provide, that's the advisory committee, shall provide an annual report to the city council on committee findings and recommendations. Recommend two, the city council should direct MPD to review and revise the MPD internal affairs citizen complaints policy dated February 18, 2015, to ensure consistency with Act 56 of 2017, which mandates that all agencies have, quote, an effective internal affairs program, end quote, in place that meets certain requirements. As part of this process, the City Council should provide an opportunity for public review and comment of any new policy. Recommendation three, all individuals, MPD employees and or independent entities who are assigned to be an, an investigator of officer misconduct should receive comprehensive internal affairs training. And recommendation four under this one, the city of Montpelier should advocate for directly and or through the engagement of local legislators, the following legislative reforms. Establish an office of the inspector general to provide independent reviews of Vermont law enforcement agencies. Establish a statewide law enforcement advisory council based on the existing state policy advisory commission in coordination with the Criminal Justice Training Council so that all law enforcement agencies have consistent internal affairs standards, review processes, and civilian oversights, and establish regional internal affairs units to promote fair and impartial investigations of officer misconduct. Uh, militarization. militarization. Recommendation is Montpelier City Council should ban MPD's application for quote, controlled equipment, end quote, commonly known as military equipment through the US Department of Defense's excess property programs, the, known as the 1033 program. If MPD seeks to acquire new items on the 1033 program controlled list not used by the department, notice should be provided to the City Council. Um, public drinking and street outreach. Recommendation one, Montpelier City Council should repeal the, its ordinance related to drinking, drinking in public places, 
chapter two, article eight, section eight, 11, 800. Uh, recommendation two, given state law, it is our understanding that the Montpelier City Council cannot decriminalize public drinking, but the City Council should direct MPD to deprioritize their response to public drinking calls and instead ensure alcohol-related calls associated with non-criminal conduct be sent to Good Samaritan Haven street outreach workers. If a street outreach worker is unavailable, calls can be routed to MPD. Alcohol-related calls associated with criminal conduct will continue to be routed to MPD. It is, it is recommended that appropriate criminal charges related to public drinking be sent to the Community Justice Center and follow their existing protocols. Recommendation three on this is Montpelier City Council should increase its financial support of Good Samaritan Haven's regional street outreach workers to 1.5 full-time equivalents, allowing uh, the Good Samaritan to hire a full-time street outreach worker in addition to the current part-time 32 hours a week worker to handle the current and future volume of outreach needs of the unhoused population and to manage the increased need associated with recommendation two. And recommendation three is increased financial resources. Oh, no, that's, that's sorry, sorry. Recommendation four, Montpelier County City Council should ensure training for one MPD officers so they understand what to look for medically when they do wellness checks on intoxicated people and how to de-escalate encounters. Two, street, work, street outreach workers so they understand what to look for medically when they do wellness checks on intoxicated people and how to de-escalate encounters. Recommendation five, Montpelier City Council should review or direct a future committee to review all public safety related ordinances to ensure they conform to modern day society and reflect the will of the city's people. Um, let's see, go on then to recruitment. <clears throat> um, Montpelier City Council should authorize revisions of the MPD minimum requirements for hiring office to include A, a minimum of one year of post-secondary education, associate's degree preferred, or equivalent life and or internship experience, and two, a demonstrated commitment to volunteer or pay, for, to volunteer or paid community service. I thought we had, I guess not. I thought we had recommended um, 18, raising the rate, age rate of it, uh, to, from 18 to 21, but I guess that got lost somewhere. Um, do you remember? Well, we can talk about that when we get there. All right, uh, sex worker, sex work. Recommendation one, Montpelier City Council should support H2268 of 2021, uh, 2021 which repeals prostitution laws while retaining felony human trafficking laws that prohibit recruiting, enticing, harboring, transporting, providing, or obtaining a minor for the purpose of commercial sex. Prioritizing a minor for commercial sex, recruiting, enticing, harboring, transporting, providing, or obtaining any person through force, fraud, or coercion for the purpose of having the person engage in commercial sex. Compelling any person through force, fraud, or coercion to engage in commercial sex and prioritizing any person for a commercial sex act who is being compelled through force, fraud, or coercion to engage in a commercial act. Recommendation two, Montpelier should repeal its prostitution ordinances, chapter 11, article eight, sections 11, 705 to 707. Which, criminalizing, which criminalize housing for sex workers, the act of sex works, and a safe workplace for sex workers. Recommendation three, MPD should continue to deprioritize the investigation of consensual sex work and instead prioritize human trafficking, coercion, and when force is at issue. That's all for that topic. Training adolescent behavior. MPD officers should receive training and under, in understanding and responding to early adolescent and adolescent behavior 
as a required supplement to basic level two and basic level three training received at the Vermont Police Academy. This training should begin as soon as possible under the authority of the Vermont Criminal Justice Council's Rule, thir rule 13, but should also be considered and urged as part of the Vermont Police Academy's basic levels, basic, basic training for level two and level three. Um, crowd control. Montpelier City Council should ensure MPD 1 develops written goals, policies, procedures, and priorities for crowd control, including mass demonstrations and mass gatherings for political purposes, as well as festivals and celebrations, planned and permitted events, spontaneous demonstrations, or events that draw large numbers of participants. That um, So policies that reflect principles and outlines uh, outlined in the middle Madison model, e.g. protecting First Amendment rights, communication, creating a psychological bond with demonstrators, de-escalation, de preservation of life over property, etc. Two, routinely trains all relevant police department personnel on goals, policies, procedures, and priorities related to crowd control as outlined and defined in paragraph one. And training, scenario-based training. Recommendation, Montpelier City Council should A, plan and implement augmentation of current offerings for its Rule 13 in-service training requirements. B, expand opportunities for officers of the MPD to participate in more advanced training learning opportunities. And C, assess the budgetary implications of additional training. These should include one, scenario-based courses and interactive instruction, for example, more time and attention to discussion as opposed to lecture dominated courses, where possible and appropriate. Two, recruiting volunteers or paying small stipends for role players in scenario based courses. Three, working with area educators to develop course offerings in ethics, multicultural fiction and nonfiction, local and state history and social sciences and su such as anthropology, psychology and sociology. All such courses should include a significant amount of time for participant discussion, not destruction. Um, wide participate for wide participation in the Vermont, wider participation in the Vermont Police Academy's Executive Leadership Institute and Supervis Supervisor Leadership Institute. Five, the council should take into action into account both the direct costs, tuition, and indirect costs, lodging when necessary, food, personal, personnel replacement, and overtime costs, et cetera, for these multi-day institutes. The city council should take the initiative to, initiative to join with other city and town governing boards to advocate for scenario-based training and lecture discussion format as prominent features of basic training for level two, three at the po Vermont Police Academy. The city council should join with other city and town governing boards to advocate for a review and if necessary, revision of the process and criteria for certifying the credentials of instructors and the content and format of courses at the academy and at in-service training. Uh, no, I do wanna keep that. that. Yeah, I That's, think uh, those are all of the 12 or 13 points, right? Is that? Those are the those are the recommendations themselves. The recommendations, yeah. And so then the process from here is that those are going to go back out for public. Is there going to be like public comment period, like hearings and things, or that's why? No hearings. Okay. Have, we haven't discussed hearings. The, the okay. plan that it would whatever comments come in, um, the the committee will review, and I'm not we are, I'm not sure what our what our procedure is after that. Okay. Well, so basically, so, like. That was long and I apologize for it, but um, if, you, if you didn't have the text in front of you, um, it, it's better at least to have something. Well, I have the text in you know, 50 different documents. So it was helpful to pull them all out and write them all together for me at least. And so I think like my big question, you know, first of all, does anyone have any questions or concerns about these points? Like I know I definitely do, but like would it make sense for the police review committee to have CJAC write like a response as a, a an additional city committee about like how like we as CJAC feel about you know maybe one or two of these points or as the recommendations as a whole like what would be an appropriate next step here
And I guess also to say, you know, so we're also going to, you know, go from this to talking about the recommendations from creative discourses, half of which are in city services and half of which are in policing and are about, you know, restorative process to after use of force incidents, which is one of the recommendations, clarify the roles and expectations of um, law enforcement officers and the greater vision for public safety and city engagement processes. Acknowledge that the feedback of, of law enforcement officers' prisons is often contradictory and opposing. Some community members want greater police presence, some want less police presence. Underlying both appears to be a desire to build trust, personal relationships with the Montpelier Police Department, and all efforts to build trust should center the voices and needs of those most directly impacted by police violence locally and nationally, and to strive for maximum transparency. So those are like some of the pieces here, and obviously the recommendations don't address like body cameras and don't address, you know, social workers and don't, yeah, don't address a lot of the pieces, fair and impartial policing, you know, a lot of the, the, the recommendations being brought up. Um, and that our process used, you know, some of the conversations with, uh, like some of the, the focus group conversations and um, to to come up with these these policing recommendations. And so, I mean, yeah, because ultimately, you know, these are just the recommendations got to go before city council and then need to be implemented by city staff. And so I think, you know, there's a lot more work that needs to be done from to get these, you know, these recommendations over the finish line. And so, um, I mean, yeah, like Michael, Lauren, sorry, saw you went off video, Lauren, like, um, would it be helpful for police review committee to, um, I mean, also half the committee is engaged, I suppose, as well. So it's like a little bit of overlap anyway, but of, of pulling out some of the key recommendations for, um, for CJAC. Well, your, your, your last observation was the one that's got me stumped because since two of us are on both, yeah. committees, it, it makes it a little awkward for, for us to, to sign on to them. A comment from the committee, uh, but uh, but I, and I don't know how to resolve that. Maybe it's just as individuals then too, like just calling on me and Pellin to like submit something. <laughs> yeah, and I think that I think you could do that. You could you could write a single one and say that the, the three of you are mem are are members of the of CJAC, um, and so that you're not writing. Well, and then and then Jeremy also. Um, yeah, and Jeremy. Yep. Yeah. Um, that you're not writing for, and you can explain it. You're not writing for the committee because two of our two of the committee members are on the both, but that that these other, and then go on with whatever you want to say. Yeah. I think that's um, that's the, the fair way to do it. Okay, getting nods from Mary too that that would make sense. And then Carolyn and Carol, do are you guys have you guys been involved in this process? And I apologize if this is total if this is just repeat for everyone except for me and Pellin, <laughs> so. No, I haven't been involved in the process. Yeah. So um, I, lo I lost sound for a oh. while and I also lost video and got confused there for a while. So I missed some of the things that you were just talking about. Um, let's see, Lauren got really unstable too. There were, I don't know what happened for me. But, raining out, I don't know, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. So I had been attending the police review committee meetings and I wasn't able to for a while. Same thing with this meeting. There was a period of time where I just had conflicts and couldn't, couldn't be here. So uh, in terms of being involved, I mean, I'm, I'm not really except that I'm part of the leadership team. So I'm paying attention to what's happening yeah. and, and uh, thinking about how it's impacting our work. So, you know, I noticed a mention about uh, sending cases to restorative justice. So that's really what my interest is in, um, you know, understanding that and making sure that when those recommendations are made that they're connecting with us so that it makes sense that it's actually sent to us. Um, um, and, and then uh, again, with the implementation and how we, how to, you know, this work informs our policies and our policy development um, and how we do our work. So that's, that's why I'm showing up. Otherwise, not directly in, um, involved in either committee, except you've seen me here. One of the things that's important to me is in looking at the outreach worker and that kind of thing, because that overlaps into what, how the homeless are treated. So, uh, I was really heartened to see that uh, additional request because I know that the current outreach worker 
I work with her fairly closely and she's overreaching. <laughs> it's a, it's a time, very time consuming job. Yeah. Well, okay, so I think what I'm hearing is maybe not writing something as committees, like as the homelessness task force or as restorative justice, but like, um, or, or as CJAC, but as, as you know, engaging in these recommendations, like as individuals and um, as, so, so I think what I'm believing is the next steps of this process are that it's going to be, there, there's there's opportunity for there's gonna be presentations to city council opportunities for public comment opportunities for input bef all before city council actually votes on these recommendations and so and then the voting then would go then to budget process which is starting up in a few weeks as well um, so there's definitely still opportunities for input but this is kind of like the recommend the launch pad for um, for those recommendations does that all sound right And anything else with police review committee? It does kind of dovetail to our next agenda item, but um, yeah, Lauren. Um, yeah, and, and so sorry, I missed a big chunk of that. Did did you mention um, like one of the things that were is not embedded in the actual report, but the committee is keeping track of a list of topics that we didn't get to, which um, like I. I think I heard you note, Jaina, like not everything that's in the creative discourse report is exactly reflected. And so those would be the kinds of things on like the next phase of um, this committee as it's ongoing. So we just wanna make sure that, that there's a, an internal list we're maintaining um, that we would pass on to the next committee or, you know, I think a lot of them might be the same people, but there might be some changeover. Um, so I'd wanna make sure that that's all captured in addition to whatever input I think that all makes sense to me that given the timeline like individuals would weigh in and then I think as CJAC we could think about when council is actually taking stuff up and there's that whole process if we'd want a more formal role in providing input okay I think that sounds good and yeah and just thank you again to Michael and Lauren for your engagement in this process so grateful to have you guys. Um, okay, and so then diving into preparing for tonight um, in the Creative Discourse presentation. Um, so Keisha will be there in person at the city council meeting and Tabitha will be joining by computer. And the um, the kind of initial plan that we had outlined last, um, so, and also, so they're about half, they're like in the middle of the agenda. And um, they've got like probably about an hour worth of content. So of like introducing it, sharing the recommendations, taking fielding questions. You know, they've got a couple of prompt questions on their slides, but that they're, um, so, but it, but it is like kind of after some things on the agenda and they have more things on the agenda from here. So the original plan that we discussed last month was that uh, CJAC will kind of introduce creative discourse, provide some context as to why we wanted to do this, Creative Discourse will do their presentation, and then potentially we would kind of follow up either in the Q&A or just to kind of close out of just like saying that we want to like support the city council to do this. And, you know, we want to, um, you know, yeah, we want to support the implementation of these recommendations. So like how, what that's going to look forward to is basically saying like, you know, as we're going into the budgeting process, like we want to make sure that this is, you know, being put in as recommendations, you know, as this is, um, you know, as we're achieving kind of these bigger goals, how can we like break this down into like incremental like goals that we can to, to move up to that to these to these larger goals. Um, and just, you know, as I can just do it briefly kind of as like a heads up um, of like what is in that recommendation. Sorry, pulling it back up real quick. Um, I already kind of read out the um, policing pieces, but for city services, it's like uh, greater accommodations for people with disabilities, um, improving the website, having simplified content, multiple languages, having anti-racism trainings for staff, keeping remote op meeting option participation options, um, improved communication and outreach targeted to underserved populations, acknowledge receipt of communication to city councilors, continue to learn what people need, 
and then you know addressing house housing issues and discrimination towards people experiencing homelessness reviewing and revising policies through an equity lens and hiring more women and uh, black indigenous people of color staff and so some of these like can be implemented immediately and it's just a matter of like supporting that happening so like acknowledging receipt of communication to city councilors right of just like encouraging city councilors to send a reply when they get emails and after they've read them um but then other things like you know housing addressing housing issues there's like that's a kind of a per, you know not perennial but it's a, an issue that there is a whole committee working on and has been for years um but and so then with that too, like offering stipends for residents for service serving on boards and commissions, um, assigning initial outreach LAP households by a city staff person to assess unmet needs and to develop a language access plan and implement plans to make public spaces and services more accessible um, via website, staff and council infrastructure, building design, things like that. So it's like some of these maybe could just be punted to other committee, you know, like ADA committee for building access, for example. Um, uh, but like we could, we we could you know do as much as like step up and volunteer to drive these things forward, which I think is the initial idea of like fundraising to be able to continue the implementation of these recommendations. Or we could task this to the city council and have them make the plan for implementation of these recommendations, you know, after discussion and acknowledging that these recommendations are priorities. Um, sorry, that was now just me a lot of my, my spitballing, but what do folks think? Well, I guess I think it's a good idea for CJAC to, to propose ways in which you can continue to participate in this process. That's certainly, um, we, we are, I think, a standing committee. So uh, we, it, it would be good to have, you know, the council know that they can ask us to, to participate in one way and to, and to make the offer and uh, to be proactive about it. I'm not sure about the fundraising part. We haven't been so successful for our own yeah. efforts, and, and, and I'm not sure that. And I think that's always going to be the stumbling block. How, how to if there is money out there, how to access it? And that's the city's. I think that's the city's responsibility. I mean, there are people, uh, I think, who are assigned to be looking around for grants, and it, it's going to be grants that are going to do it, um, and they're going to have to be. Unfortunately, they're going to have to be federal because. As we discovered, most foundations will not give to give money to cities, municipalities. They only give them to five hundred one c threes. And as well, I mean, I think we thought you know, maybe some of these recommendations could be things that would be fundable. But like, I think getting you know doing LEP outreach or doing, um, like stipends for participation. Those are things that are not going to be. <laughs> be fundable from grants um so and these are things that other others you know cities have done essex just did has a thirty two thousand dollar line item budget for providing stipends to for participants in you know in committees and so i think like there's there's good exemplars of what this could look like and um will make you know make a big difference so um yeah, so I guess I, I kind of was thinking like initially when we met last month thinking this would be like a lot more formal of like here's what we're recommending to do as next steps and I think I'm coming in and maybe I'm hearing from you Michael as being like. We want to lean on the city a little bit more here to be to be pushing forward these recommendations and to offer ourselves as support to make that happen, is that right. yeah. And that will help us then too with our own long range planning yeah. Helen, Lauren, what do you guys think about this plan for tonight? It sounds good for me. Yeah, I think that sounds good. This is Lauren on the phone. Sorry, my internet got so bad. <laughs> um, I guess the other, I think it's like both CJAC providing support and accountability. Like we're going to be continuing to show up regularly and like check in on how it's going with the priorities and like maintain 
ensure like councils maintaining the focus and prioritizing this work. Just, I, th I think if the full council feels like, oh, people are gonna be watching <laughs> the follow through, not just maybe some good sentiments tonight, but that would be helpful as well as the support and accountability. And so that accountability, like offering, you know, checking in every four months, you know, or checking in quarterly to, um, to, to, to ask questions about how the implementation is going <laughs> and to seek, um, seek input from um, residents about how they're feeling this is being implemented. Does that, would that make sense? Yeah, I, I think just, just knowing like this is going to be ongoing and like that we're going to be checking in and reporting back regularly. I, I think it would keep, keep the focus on it for example. So yeah, I like the way you put it. Yeah. And so then as we're kind of the next phase coming out of this is going into the budgeting process and going into that, we are, you know, asking for $10,000 or we, you know, have a commitment from the city for an additional $10,000 for continuing this process. Do we anticipate there being additional funds needed to, um, to implement this? Like for, I'm thinking of like the LEP outreach in particular. Um, and like, I don't necessarily think we need to bring that up on today's call, but of like, or today's, you know, city council meeting, but for future um, work. Yeah. What would that look like? I'm gonna mute for that train. <laughs> Michael, several months ago, we talked about having the city um, history rewritten and sending it over to some historians. And that would entail some costs. And I assume that would come out of the $10,000 Michael, do you have an update from that? Yeah. Um, I, I, I have sent, I've contacted two people who've agreed to do some work on this. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> One is the state archeologist who said he would, he would be happy to rewrite the first section um, and give a little bit more information about the native, the native population. Um, and the other is Paul Carnahan, who um, with another guy published a book on um, mostly a photographic history, but it has essays and, he can easily adapt some of the uh, the introductory essays to new sections of the report. And I volunteered to be the editor and kind of project coordinator. Um, it's a very modest budget. And I sent the, the uh, numbers over to to Carolyn uh, uh, Cameron. Um, and she's got plenty else to do on her plate. So she hasn't responded to that. Uh, uh, so I'm waiting to hear from her. Although the other the guys have that I contacted um, agreed to go forward with it, but I haven't yet heard that she she, she said they'd find it was a small amount they, they'd find the money for it. So I think we can depend on it happening. I asked the the the, the two writers to um, to get a text to me at the end of this month if possible, but I pointed out there was no tremendous rush for this. Um, and uh, there'll be new there'll be new illustrations as well. Paul Carnahan at the at the Vermont Historical Society will use the VHS uh, photo li photo library to to find more uh, convincing and uh, informative photographs than what's on the on the current page. And so it, it will certainly it will only be a, 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 a few, uh, maybe three hundred dollars at most. So it's not a big deal. And Cameron's not not worried about that, so far as I can tell. She didn't say, "I will," you know. She didn't say, "Stop the press." So that's where we are. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks for moving forward on that. You're welcome. Shana. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, Michael. Um, I mean, I think maybe for tonight, it could be helpful just as part of the conversation around ongoing work and support, just making clear, um, you know, our, that our expectation um, was, you know, we knew 
as a city when we committed the 10,000 that this is going to be an ongoing so um, you know 10,000 ongoing for the the work with our consultants um, and through the work that's been done and the report that council is receiving tonight then there's you know some uh, recommendations that have budget implications and that you know, as C. Jack, we, um, you know, we know the budget process is coming up and we'll be working with Cameron and, uh, and city staff on estimates of what, um, what other budget recommendations we might have. Um, like, I, I think that should be just viewed totally separately from the 10,000, assuming that we think, I mean, we could discuss that, I guess, if we think like ongoing contract with creative discourse or, um, I, I thought that's what we had generally been thinking about. So I would view this all as like additional expenditures and that we could offer to, you know, get better estimates and have that ready for kind of budget season. Carolyn? Uh, one thing that occurred to me is maybe we want to partner with Kellogg Hubbard Library and expanding any of their um, resource materials or trainings, you know, uh, they do a lot of things with children in this area. Um, and, and we might want to set aside some money to uh, encourage them to do more. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this kind of plan that we had developed out with creative discourses kind of had five main parts. And we've kind of done the first two, which is like identify effective strategies to engage with and include underserved, underrepresented communities in Montpelier, capture these concerns and needs. Um, and then the next stages are about building the capacity for formal and informal leaders to apply social justice lens to their analysis, engagement, service delivery, and decision making. It's kind of also what we kind of initially did with our the um, the committee chair meeting. And then you know promoting the emergence of leadership that reflects diversity of its populace and contribute to ongoing development of a vibrant, inclusive, welcoming community that attracts people to the region. Um, and so it's you know also you know very big picture visionary phases, but not like super like, here's when we've completed this phase and here we're going on to the next one. Um, but so that we like we are, you know, you know, we said this is gonna be a two year process. And this is kind of the first the first phase was doing this equity audit. So um, now it's about implementation, um, which will be, you know, ongoing and <laughs> forever, uh, as as will be the, the, the audit. Um, but so just to, to I just want to affirm here real quick. I also think that we want to make sure that this 10K is for continuing this process of building out this leadership and continuing to have that like external accountability for the implementation and making the plan for that. Um, in addition to additional budget recommendations for that implementation. Does, and so I, I, I agree with Lauren, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So when you go back to council tonight, uh, not just stand ready to, you know, go further. It's sort of amorphous what you're going to say that we're available to, to support this. But I think I'd flesh that out a little bit more that is based on the studies that you have done, here are our next steps. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's clear that the, 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 this committee has a, a, a reason for going forward, not just to support council, but also to, to move ahead in making the community more inclusive. Right. And so that's, I think, the recommendations are, you know, stipends for serving on boards, LEP community outreach, um, access, more accessible spaces and websites, and, um, and then the police recommendations, which I think we're kind of rec recognizing here and a little bit more punting to the police review committee process, which will be a little, a few months later. But do, those those feel like the right. I mean, we we had, we had this conversation last month, but like that's, those being the like next recommendations for the city in implementing this plan. And as far as like what that budget would look like, I have no idea. I think we would. <laughs> I have like absolutely no I, no clue what LEP outreach budgets look like. So. Um. Okay. Uh, any, yeah, what, anything else for planning for the meeting tonight? Sorry. I think maybe we can end early once again.
I'm just looking over my notes here real quick, sorry. Um, okay, and so then um, last things on our agenda are just other business, anything else? Um, I think, yeah, we've, I, I, I just wanna recognize in other business, of kind of what Pellin was saying, all of the, you know, conversation that's been happening on Front Porch Forum of kind of overt interpersonal racism that's been happening in the city over the past few weeks. Um, and kind of in response to that, I did post about the city council meeting tonight and encouraging folks to come and to like share about what's happening. And maybe I can, can address that kind of in the opening comments. Um, but yeah, I've just, and, and kind of reached out to people individually via, you know, front, through the, you know, reply to Front Porch Forum. Um, but uh, other than that, I, I, um, the, I think, you know, it's just kind of like building the base so that this type of thing doesn't happen again, but, you know, not, not no, like not knowing if there is any type of like harm reduction or reparative process, because we don't know who the perpetrators are because it's, you know, being shouted out of car windows kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, just if there's any other kind of reflections, uh, from this, um, that's kind of uptick in this overt racism that's at least being reported publicly on Front Court Forum. And then, um, Sorry, there's also another email that I just wanted to bring up real quick. And then there's also the, um, the conversation that's been happening around the proposed encampment policy. And again, you know, just lots of comments and threads on Front Porch Forum with you know a great lack of empathy or misunderstanding of the issues or general nimbiness you know not in my backyard and so um i recognizing that there is like a lot more support you know like or under you know of um of of people with greater you know a lot of a lot of work happening with the homelessness task force i feel like i did not super engage in those in those conversations or um, but yeah, didn't know if there was, you know, anything more that we wanted to discuss, um, just about that kind of hot button conversation on Front Porch Forum over the past, um, month. And I guess Carolyn, like, yeah, where do, as, as the resident homelessness task force, uh, member here, any, yeah, any kind of update on, on the encampment? policy we're supposed to look at the current version today at our meeting oh, okay uh, i mean the thing that saddens me uh is that the original one came out and i i felt that it was a very humane thing that provided guidance this is my personal feeling they provided guidance to city employees on how to interact with the unhoused people it's now become more the the, the, the first page is about the property mm. and the guy's budget and it's become much more focused on protecting the landscape and uh, people's rights, you know, the, the people who live here's rights. Um, and, and that saddens me. I mean, it saddens me because it, it has changed character. Um, what it tells me is what, again, this is a personal opinion, was that we should have an area where it is acceptable you know, at the outset, we should have had an area. So as in all things, I view it now as an opening for us to do something more constructive about two things. One is an encampment area of some sort, like I'm not so sure about tiny homes, but something along that line. And the other thing is to do something more about the sanitation facilities in the community. And so I volunteered to be on what I call the potty committee because Old people have potty needs and little kids, we all know have potty needs and tourists definitely do. That I think we can do something there that will address sanitation issues on a more general basis for the whole community. So, you know, it's like, you know, one door closes, another door opens. But it did sadden me to see the ch shift in um, emphasis. Yeah. 
And, and you're aware that's, um, from my understanding, um, from you know having conversations on the leadership team about this policy and getting regular updates, um, you know, to review, it's the parks. The parks commission had a lot to do with guiding how the changes were made. So you know, and that's a, you know, commission of people, residents. So, you know, that's that's just what it is. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying is that you know, yeah. get my my reflection on it. Um, and, and 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 if that's what the community wants, then I think we need to come up with another solution. And basically, we need to have a long term solution because we're going to see a homeless issue in some form or another forever. And it may be only a day or two, it may be a week or two, it may be longer, but we will have people who lose their housing and are suddenly stuck on the street and have to cope. And uh, and again, that's my personal perspective, but judging by what's happened to people, you know, they get evicted, they, you know, get put out of this place or that place, that, that this will happen. So rather than keep looking at Band-Aids and, you know, cause we're coming on winter now, we'll finalize this policy about the time when we're starting to look for winter shelter. Um, there's gotta be a better way. And so, yeah, so I guess for that one too, is there any, do you see a role for CJAC in those conversations, I suppose? Not at present, but that doesn't mean yeah. going forward because I think CJAC wants to see everybody treated uh, humanely, for lack of a better phrase, yeah. regardless of socioeconomic status, um, ethnicity, et cetera. So uh, quite possibly, uh, I was heartened to see what the police are doing as far as outreach because outreach is really tremendously important. So, and social work. I, I think for me, you know, in, in uh, considering all of this, there's, it's the, the public perception of, um, of what, you know, who the, who the people are that are out there that, so I, th I think there needs to be public education about what the realities are around who the folks are that are out there. And there are people who choose to not go to shelter. You know, it's, it, it is by choice that they camp. There are definitely people who, who choose to do that and, um, you know, for their own, for their own reasons. Um, so I, I, you know, I think it's, it, it really is always considering um, you know, privilege and how we, how we, uh, how we are trapped in, <laughs> in privilege and, and how, uh, the public perceives, you know, that this is a problem as opposed to this is, you know, a, the reality, um, and, you know, to help people understand that, um, that everybody's different and that there are different needs. And so I think there's, you know, it's a, it's a cultural shift, mm -hmm. you know, in a very white uh, privileged town in Vermont. So I think the education piece may be something, you know, like is and it, what came to mind for me while we were having this conversation is, I don't, I don't know if anybody is aware of the neighbor keepers model that was developed by Hal Colston, which is a, a way it's basically an anti-poverty model to break down um, break down the, the barriers between people who have and those who don't have. Um, you know, so it's it's really um, what um, intentional. It's intentional relationship building, and it really is meant to break down classism. Um, so. It just makes me think about that, like how how do we get out of our own bubble and and really embrace the people who are um, in a different place than we are. So again, what it comes down to for me is like how do we have that cultural shift by educating the public? Yeah, I think it's important because we, we all jump to a conclusion as to what those people are like, and where they're coming from, and. Uh, it's, it's, 
because of the house, see, I've got the housing committee too, because of the housing situation, um, it's, it's just not available. So that if you uh, lose your housing under any circumstances, look at front page forum, yeah. getting housed in this area is very difficult uh, under any circumstance. And then if you have any marks against you, then it's even more difficult. And so it can happen across any socioeconomic lines. Uh, it tends to be more prevalent, I'm sure, in some, but, uh, you know, I look at it there for grace of God go I kind of thing that some people are just one paycheck away. So yes, education is important to show the diversity of the unhoused community. And then, as you point out, there's some people who don't want to be, but there are some people who simply can't be housed because they don't behave well in a house situation. And, and that's another category of people that need to be worked with in, in a different way. And the good news that I found was that the model in recent years has been, quote, to meet people where they're at. So Washington County Mental Health seems to be, do a pretty good job of, of knowing where certain people are at and working with them in an appropriate way. So at any rate, so it's... Uh, yeah. And, so and I think, sorry. Go ahead. I thought you were done. I apologize now. I was just gonna say like, I think so like maybe the call here is for us all to, you know, be replying to folks individually, sparking conversation, having like um, sharing resources, sharing information. Um, and I like didn't hear about that one. So I'm gonna look up that the um, uh, neighbor, neighbor keepers model and things like that. And so of, of just continuing to like intentionally have these conversations with, with our neighbors and stuff and, you know, on front porch forum or, or elsewhere. Is that all like as, as the kind of immediate next step here, is that, am I capturing that right? Jaina, if you want to have a conversation with me, we can just schedule that too. Cause I used to do some work around that model. I was trained. Oh, cool. And, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll just have to like literally look it up first. So I don't know the words. Awesome. Okay. Um, um, Shana? Lauren? Just one other, yeah, just one other, um, I mean, it, it, I, I don't think it'd be immediate term, but I mean, it does raise for me, like, is there a more like partnership role? So, you know, I think we got a lot of really good feedback of the meeting where we pulled together the yeah. um, leads of all the city committees. And now Montpelier Live has reached out. And I know that I think it was the planning commission had said that they wanted to work with CJAC. Like, I guess, you know, when we're looking at like our work plan for the next year as part of that, like, I mean, I do think that some, you know, maybe there is a more, there's the informal work we can do that you laid out, but is there a more formal, like, I mean, this is almost to me like a, for lack of a better word, like interesting, like case study as a community, like, okay, we faced, I think a lot of people who I heard from, for example, as a counselor, who I think would like deeply believe in like the mission of our committee had some very like knee jerk, like, oh, I don't want people, like, I like to use the park and I don't want people camping in the park where I might have to see them. And like, how do we have those conversations? And is there a, is there a more like formal, like, you know, a series of educational forums or I don't know what it might be, but anyway, I just wanted to like, is there, is there a more formal in addition to the informal that like where we might partner with the homelessness task force on something like that? Um, just putting that idea for another date and maybe like when it's not like still an active conversation of the policy, but more like, what did we learn from this as a community? And how do we address these issues moving forward? That's the one way to think about it. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to flag was um, there is also, and I know you and I had talked about this very briefly, Shana, but um, with the American Rescue Plan Act money coming into the city, um, a, the council, you know, most of that is just going to fill needs that were left aside because we lost a bunch of revenue as a community. Um, but council did say that, you know, for addressing 
kind of urgent community needs that arose because of COVID that some portion of the money should go to to that, to helping people. And um, I, and I, it's very unclear like what that might go to. And there's, you know, a bunch of ways it could be spent. Um, so that could be something that we as a committee, so there's like the recommendations coming out of the creative discourse, but maybe there's a broader lens too of, you know, I'm just thinking of the Carolyn race, there's like, hygiene facilities and I know that two of you are on the the, the potty committee or <laughs> whatever it's called but um you know are there other even like is there a shorter term if we're going to build a permanent facility um shorter term things that we can do like helping acute needs that people in our community have right now so and there's there's a little bit of money and so if we want to roll in helping shape that I think CJAC could also be thinking about that Thanks, Lauren. It's like if anyone had any responses, but also we are all still here. We heard you on your phone. You can't see us nodding. Okay, so okay, so just to kind of recap here, um, uh, Helen and I are going to connect with Montpelier Alive. Helen, Jeremy, and I are going to write something as members of CJAC and response to the Police Review Committee. We've got the meeting tonight where we're going to show up and you know support what's what's being happen. Michael's going to continue working on the website updates with his folks and working with Cameron on getting the budget for that. Um, we're going to you know continue doing like the individualized outreach and then for our meeting our next meeting thinking more about what it like continuing to check in on the follow-up from the CJAC meeting, the follow-up from the Montpelier um, Police Review Committee meetings um, or conversations, and then also of like following up with, um, oh, sorry, following up with the Planning Commission was also up there. I have not heard back from them for a while. And then of having some of these, continuing to have these conversations about how will we proactively engage in some of these conversations. So the ideas of, you know, educational forums, a homelessness task force, bathrooms, like kind of soliciting the kind of urgent needs and requests of our community, as well as doing kind of that base building, um, uh, relationship building, um, or, and kind of build, yeah, building the base of like the, the information uh, for our community. Um, uh, at our next meeting. Is, am I capturing that all? I'm, I know I did not capture those in cohesive and, and thoughtful words, but like capturing the, the, the ideas. <laughs> Michael, you're muted, but I think you're just saying, yeah. No, just that if you, if you have taken written notes, would you send them along to me and I'll sort of see how to incorporate them into the minutes. Cool. Um, all right. And so then our next meeting kind of been splitting between doing meetings every two weeks and every month. Um, and a month from a month from now is Yom Kippur. So I don't want to do a month, but we could do um we could do um September 1st, which is two weeks from now. Um, what, yeah, what do folks think? Or we could do, you know, three weeks from now, September 8th. Um, don't know if there's. Palette? Can we have it in three weeks? Uh, I think two weeks seems a little bit short with yeah. all the items you listed and complete them. Yeah, so September 8th from 8.30 to 10. It's okay. Cool. Mary, can you send that out or set that, set that Zoom up and stuff? Cool. Awesome. All righty. I think that's it. I'll see you guys in like eight hours at the city council meeting and um, and then see you again in a couple of weeks. I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thanks all. Cool. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye.